This uh, presentation is on plant transport, one of the sections within exchange and transport in Unit 2. We'll first of all talk about how water enters a plant um, through the root hair cell, how it travels across the cortex, through the endodermis and into the xylem. Um, I've split the long answer question into two. There's a blue bit and a red bit. The blue bit is the marking points for how water gets into the root hair cell and crosses the cortex. And the red marking points are for how water crosses the endodermis and into the xylem. And they could be merged in one big question talking about um, how water goes right across the root and into the xylem. So first of all, we've got water enters through a root hair cell by osmosis. The, remember the root hair cells have got a large surface area, so these projections, large surface area, so water enters them by osmosis. And the reason it can do that is because there's a higher water potential outside and inside, so water moves down its water potential gradient into the root hair cell. Water then moves across the cortex. So the cortex is a layer of many, many, many cells, um, the water has to cross from the root hair cell to get to the endodermis. And it can do it in two ways. It can go through the cytoplasm between plasma desmata and the gaps that occur in between uh, the cell walls. So you've got continuous cytoplasm. So through the cytoplasm by the symplastic pathway. So water can move by the symplastic pathway or it can go through the cell walls by the apoplastic pathway. Water has now reached the endodermis. So the endodermis is adapted to actively transport ions from the endodermis into the xylem. You get a really negative, very, very low water potential in the xylem. So you get a water potential gradient, so water can move into the xylem by osmosis. The fact that you are, the fact that you are actively transporting ions into the xylem, creating very negative water potential. So water moves into the xylem by osmosis, helps to create root pressure, which pushes water a little bit up the plant, only a couple of centimetres. So root pressure is a reason why water can move a few centimetres up a plant, but to get to the top of a massive tree, that would not be enough to get water all the way to the leaves. So the cohesion tension theory explains how this can be achieved. So we've got the leaf up here, and this is in the leaf, these cells here are in the leaf, and this is a xylem in the leaf. This xylem is connected all the way down through the leaf, through this um, trunk of the tree, to the roots underneath the soil. And here we've got the root hair cell. So water will go from the root hair cell, through the root, through the endodermis, into the xylem, up the xylem, to the leaf and then out of the leaf. That doesn't get you any marking points, that just shows where things are. These are the marking points here for a question. So, how does the cohesion tension theory work? Well, first of all, it starts off in the leaf, but the loss of water evaporating from a leaf. This creates a much uh, lower water potential in the leaf, uh, leaf cells because water has left them. So water evaporates from these cells, They've lost water, so they've got a lower water potential inside these leaf cells. As a result, you've got a water potential gradient going from the xylem, so it's high here, low here, so water moves across the leaf cells by osmosis. This draws water out of the xylem by osmosis. You then get this strange phenomenon. Within the xylem itself, all the way through the xylem, you have this continuous column of water. Each water molecule is joined to each other by hydrogen bonding through the xylem. So the water molecule tens of metres up will be joined to water molecules at the base of the tree, each water molecule hydrogen bonded to the next. So as water is pulled out of the xylem here, it's then pulling on all the water molecules behind it. This creates tension and the water is pulled up as a column and it's because of the hydrogen bonding that they can do that. Now, you might think, well, why doesn't the hydrogen bonding break? Hydrogen bonds are quite weak. Well, it's because the uh, water molecules adhere to the xylem walls. It helps to stop the column from breaking. These graphs are very common. Um, 
so one variable is measured which can affect the uh, how quickly water moves through the xylem or moves through the plant. So first of all, you'd have to describe, so we've got the describe point here, the fact that the rate of movement peaks at 12 and then decreases. So why could that be? Well, we're looking at a light intensity here. So first of all, what must be causing the water to move faster through the, through the xylem is that you've got more uh, transpiration. If you've got more transpiration, you've got more tension. So you've got more water molecules moving through as a column because water molecules are joined together by cohesion. So more transpiration, more tension, more cohesion, and the water molecules move through as a column. So the idea, more water is lost in the leaf, which will mean more water is moving through the xylem. But why is more water lost through the leaf? Well, usually it's because something is opening the stomata. So the, as the light intensity increases, this causes more stomata to open. More stomata opening, more evaporation from the leaf. But the light intensity is still high, but this decreases, the rate of water movement decreases much faster. So the fall is due to the stomata closing. So it could be because the water's lost too much, the plant's lost too much water. So it might actually close them before the light intensity decreases. So the decrease is always due to the stomata closing. But it might not just be light intensity that's causing an increase in rate of movement. It could be some another factor. For example, an increase in temperature could also explain why water moves, more water is lost, more water transpires from the leaf at midday. You've also got this graph here. These are very common. How the diameter of a tree trunk can change during the day. The idea being that more transpiration, so at midday, at noon, you've got a smaller diameter. So at midday, you've got a smaller diameter. This is because you've got more adhesion between the xylem and the water. You've got more tension. So it's kind of sucking on the xylem walls. Here are some factors which can increase the rate of transpiration. So it can cause the movement of water through the xylem to increase. So you've got increased light intensity because increasing the light intensity increases the number of stomata that are open. So you can have more evaporation. Increase in temperature increases the kinetic energy, so more water can be lost through the stomata, evaporate from the stomata in, at, per unit time. A decrease in humidity, now this is the only one if you decrease it, it increases the rate of transpiration. So decreased humidity, if you lower the humidity, this creates a bigger water potential gradient, so more water will move out of the leaf cells by osmosis, and ev so more water will evaporate from the leaf cells. Increased wind speed, now this blows away any water, any moisture that's uh, trapped underneath the bottom of the leaf, creating a bigger water potential gradient. So more water can leave the leaf cells by osmosis, more water can evaporate from the leaf cells. On a side note, xerophytes, so the plants that are adapted to reduce water loss, things like cacti um, or pl plants that live in places where they can't get much water, there's not much water, they can lose a lot of water, have adaptations to reduce some of these. So they can maintain a high humidity next to the leaf with the stung, sunken stomata, the hairy leaves, the rolled leaves. They can also um, protect the stomata from the wind by having sunken stomata and the hairy leaves. Both of which help to in maintain a high uh, humidity inside the leaf, so there's not a big water potential gradient. Very little water will be evaporated from the leaf.